Let's make sure I'm up and running real quick. Uh, okay, I'll keep Facebook open. I'll try and make sure I can see those comments. And then... We'll check Pixelogic's page, and we'll get cracking. Uh, the first thing I want to go over from my stream on Thursday, last Thursday, is this donuts. There's one more thing I want to add here. <laughs> Wait for it. Okay, so these donuts that we made, if I double click this uh, material that we brought over and go into the material graph. So this is a ZBrush material that I brought in, and we have this texture map legacy. Oops, hold on. There we go. Hey, Mortar, thanks for showing up. Uh, we got this texture map here. If you double click this and you scroll all the way down to the bottom, this is the brightness slider. I think it's set to one by default. And you're going to see that makes these donuts pretty dark. So um, even if you go in here and you change these settings, uh, that original poly paint is going to be pretty dark. So under texture map legacy over here, go down to brightness and modify this. I think it pushed it up to three something. And now you'll get uh, a little more ambient out of that donut color there. Um, okay, I'm up and running. Yay. Ooh, lots of notifications. Now on, f ooh, face oh, okay, I am live. So I I I if I click this here, I should see Facebook comments. I should. We'll see how long that lasts. Let me move this over here real quick. So we've got YouTube, we've got Twitch, and now we have Facebook. Uh, let me move. I got some stuff open over here, so let me scooch some stuff real quick. All right, there you go. We'll, well, I have a window open. Nothing so far, but I'll leave that open. Okay, so, um, thanks Harsh for showing up. Thanks for the kind words. Will you making a tutorial series on the features found in ZBrush 2018? Oh, you better believe I am. In fact, if we go to my Camtasia, well, it's not Camtasia, so we're going to go to streaming, nope, recording, ZBrush 2018, what's new, and then source video. I've got through Sculptress Pro, restrictions, Boolean snake hook, all the new snake hooks, testimate, and then project primitive is pretty much done. After this, I think I'm about two thirds of the way done. So I was gonna have it done this morning and then I realized I had to stream for Pixelogic. So uh, I'll keep going on that. I would say easily by this weekend, I should have all the videos done. If not, as I edit them, I'm gonna be throwing them up on my YouTube channel. So keep your peepers open. And I'm also drinking hot water. Hopefully that'll help with my scratchy voice. Okay, so on Facebook, um, which application you use? I'm using, right now I'm using Keyshot for these donuts, but we don't have to use Keyshot. We can quit out of this. I just installed the latest one there. Uh, so we'll be using ZBrush today because we're on Pixelogic's channel. Uh, the only reason I brought the Keyshot stuff was because my stream last time we sent over, if I go to load tool here, streaming, donuts, plate of donuts, donut, plate of donuts. We made donuts. I don't know why we made donuts. I don't remember. I think it was on my list of things. But as you can see, uh, we made some donuts in ZBrush, complete with sprinkles. Oh, that's another thing, too. So let's say we want to send this over. So I'm going to go to prefer render, external render, key shot. And I want to just render these in key shot. And I'll show you just really quick because I had to do it on the sprinkles as well. So that's going to go ahead and send over my donuts. Wait for it. They're not too heavy. It shouldn't take too long. There we go. So now this is straight out of ZBrush here. So if I go in here, you're gonna see these sprinkles. Um, they look a little metallic. So first thing I'm gonna do is go from advanced. I'm just gonna make these plastic. You can make them translucent if you want to. If you do make them translucent, make sure. That's another thing I need to bring up. Under translucency, go over here to lighting and change that to like a product lighting so you can actually see what the translucency is doing. If you want very, very accurate, you can probably put it up to jewelry. It'll basically turn all these things on, but I don't think we need to be that accurate. And then um, back here under material, we can actually let's go to scene. We'll double click these sprinkles. 
and then here we're in the translucent material and now you can start changing like the surface and the subsurface and uh, specular we can go ahead and make them really shiny if we want to and all that good stuff uh, so now that we have that we're going to still go into the material graph here and you're going to see we have our poly paint here. I'm going to go down here and we're going to change that brightness and we're going to brighten those up just a bit. And then exactly the same thing with the donuts over here. Change this to whatever you'd want, but on the material graph, you can go down here and change this brightness too if the donuts themselves are showing up a little dark from your poly paint. And then of course this one here, this one I'm just going to swap out. Uh, in fact, this one we don't even need. I think we have a poly paint assigned, but if you want, we'll go over here to materials and we'll just type in plastic. And then we'll go to hard, shiny plastic, make it red. Completely ob obliterate that. So if we go here, we don't have any ZBrush information plugged in. And then you can set this to whatever you'd like. So we can make this whatever color we want. And we're good to go and then change the roughness value to whatever makes sense for what you're working on. Cool, thanks for showing up everybody. Um, <laughs> that's true, if I wanted to make this a little bit more accurate, I would probably have some sprinkles on the plate because Lord knows those things don't stay on very well. Um, show us how to bring a model from ZBrush to Marmoset tool bag or Unreal. Show us how to build the wings on your ZBrush 2018 spaceship. Um, what's my 2018 spaceship? Let me go look for that. Let's see, load, I think that was a Houdini ship. Uh, ZBrush, tapered front, heavy feedback, Houdini skimmer. Let me see if this one's up to date. Alrighty. Uh, boop, boop, beep. There we go. Uh, as far as Marmoset tool bag, I'm trying to think if I have an object that I could bring in that would be worthwhile that's render friendly. Let me go ahead and set a line cursor service. So this thing here, um, blah, blah, blah. Uh, yeah, we could talk a little bit about spaceships. Um, a lot of it was just using the uh, project primitive to kind of get me my soft shape. So if I kind of, I can, you know, I'll stick this over here. We'll do shift S, save a little screenshot. And uh, you know what, we can just delete all these. So we'll delete all. Uh, actually, you know what, let's, what am I looking for here? Let's switch this over to a poly mesh here and we'll start modeling. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go way down here to the bottom, go to initialize Q cube and then deformation unify. For you guys, this is my custom menu. If you want my custom menu, I'm not, you don't need to make use my custom menu. Uh, if you want information on how to set up your own custom interface with custom hotkeys and custom menus and then assigning hotkeys to those custom menus so you have quick access to them. Um, if you go to my YouTube channel and go to the playlist and go to Intro to ZBrush Part 2, I'll link you guys that. Cool. Uh, Raphael says on Facebook, I have a small question. How do you keep the materials in Keyshot if you re-render them from ZBrush without overwriting them? Um, Oh, so when you have something in Keyshot and then when you resend it over through the bridge, it overwrites them. What I usually do, let's go ahead and, um, you know what? We'll do this real quick. We'll go to Render, External Render. We'll open up Keyshot real quick. Um, it's not a perfect example, but what I can do, you'll see over here I have donut frosting and sprinkles. That was after I'd already updated them and I put them in a donut folder. So when you bring over the materials, you set them up. Uh, what I would do is say we have this thing as another material and we want to go, actually we'll start with this. Well, no, we'll start with this. So we've got this one and we want to change the diffuse to be blended with maybe a green color. And then we're going to go into the, whoops, material graph. And we're going to go down here and again, change that brightness a bit. And let's just do one more thing. We'll say the specular is very bright, so it's nice and shiny and also the ambient can be nice and bright too. Well, you know what? Let's make the ambient, yeah, I'll make the ambient white. Okay, so the roughness will turn down just a little bit and the refractive index sometimes fun to play with, but not in this case. So let's say we've changed this material. So now what I would do, and we got it the way we like it. I think I would right click this and go to 
Well, first we can probably rename it. So right up here, we can say ZB green and then save to library. And that's gonna put you in the materials folder. You can, before you put it over here, you can make a new folder or I can just drop it into a pre-existing one like donut. So now under donut, I have ZB green. So then you can reapply it. It's not perfect. I know that there might be a more elegant way to lock it in and just update the model, which would be great, but I don't, to my knowledge, I don't know that there's a way to do that. I wish I had a better answer for you, but, um, okay, so we're going to talk about spaceships, hit exegol cross symmetry here, and uh, I'll link you guys to my playlist too, so I keep it up with, uh, there you go. You can uh, hope maybe hopefully that'll show up. Okay. Um, yeah, back we just had to do a little bit of bone up <laughs> donut follow up. Uh, okay, so now we want to make this wing. So we can start with if you want to just Z model the wing. Uh, this it's any one of these things you could probably just accomplish with Z modeler as well. If we want to, we could say go in here Q mesh polygroup all. We're in Z modeler brush, so B Z M. Or you're going to sign a hotkey to it. Q mesh polygroup ball. Q mesh polygroup ball. And then you can hold down shift if you want to make it this size. And hold down shift if you want to make it this size. Or you can Q mesh these things of, you know, however you'd like to use this. If you hold down shift, it'll just push along that surface normal so you can get that basic shape. And now I'm just going to go in here and we'll do like a crease level of three, smooth subdiv of four. And then, well, here's, a, here, here's the deal. You're going to see I have my dynamic properties and my crease properties very close to each other in this custom menu I have. That's because otherwise I got to go over here to geometry, crease, and then open up dynamic as well. If you want to open up multiple menus at the same time, just hold down shift. And now I can go over here and I can say crease level of three and a crease tolerance. We'll go ahead and set that to 45 and that'll go ahead and crease all my angles over here. If they're more than 45, you could also in this case, since they're all different poly groups here, Seems kind of dark in ZBrush. There we go. Um, since they're all different polygroups, you could also hit, if I do uncrease all, and then we do crease PG, crease polygroup. Well, you made me a liar, did you? Crease PG. Oh wait, I'm doing uncrease PG. Crease PG, <laughs> stupid. Um, so you can crease the polygroups as well, and that'll give you the same result. Either way, uh, basically what I did was set the crease level lower than my dynamic smooth subdivision level so that I can get rounded forms on here. And that's pretty much this shape. And now all I need to do is go through here and say, okay, hover over this, insert single edge loop, and then control alt to unmask this, bring this back a little bit and get that shape. And then maybe we can go through here and we can say crease edge loop, comp uh, yeah, let's not do edge loop completely. Let's do crease edge, hold down alt and uncrease those edges. We basically got that shape. And if you want to tighten these up a little bit, insert single edge loop and just put in a little control loop so you can just kind of get those corners exactly how you want and you're pretty good to go. So in this case here, you may want to push these back. So I'm going to say Q mesh, hold down alt and just paint those and then just pull those through or maybe not. Let's try this. Let's do shift D. Let's paint these bottom ones and push them up. And on this one, I'm going to do Q mesh poly group all. And it doesn't really matter. Even if I did a single poly, that'll still pull these ones because anything you alt and paint is going to treat as a single poly. And you're going to notice as I push this up, it kind of, it does a little bit of incremental work here. If I want to avoid that, all I got to do is go to align full step. And then when I push this up, it should snap here. And let's alt paint these ones so it snaps here. Um, also, we can probably get rid of this one. We'll go insert single edge loop. And this one, we need to snap up. There we go. So now we've snapped that up. We've got this shape. Again, if I want to crease these angles, we'll just go over here to crease. We'll hit D, always yes. So D and shift D toggles me out of dynamic mode. And now we've got this look, hooray. We've got that look going on over there. And then probably at this point, I would say smooth subdiv of five, just to get a little bit of a smoother result. Let's go back to matte cap gray. Um, if I want to put in a control loop here, so insert single edge loop, you can see we can kind of tighten up these angles here just a tiny bit. And then if I want to put a cap on this, all I got to do, duplicate this thing off. You don't have to, you can, if you wanted to, you could go, let's go ahead and just do a slice. So we'll do a slice curve here. And then you can go hover over an edge, 
polygroup poly loop, tap alt, Q mesh polygroup all, and you can just do whatever you need to do here, like this, or we can also start alt painting this one, tap shift and inherit that poly paint, and now you can just Q mesh this up. You might need to do a little bit of cleanup there. Um, but the reason why I would duplicate this off first is I like to have the ability to make this into a separate material. So in this case, if I grab these polygons right here that I want, and we'll just go ahead and delete hidden. That's geometry modified topology delete hidden. And you know what? We might, okay, let's do this. Alt and then shift, and then we'll paint all that. And let's go ahead and do a geometry modified topology close holes. I'll do a mirror and weld which is <laughs> Geometry Modified Topology Mirror and Weld. And again, we'll go here to Delete Edge, and we'll just go ahead and delete these extraneous edges here. So we've got a nice, and we'll go ahead and do another crease. So when I subdivide this one, we've got a nice cap sitting on the end here. And now I can QMesh Polygroup Ball and just hold down Shift, and it'll just push along those surface normals. And now I've got a little cap that I can continue to model or do whatever I want with. So if I want to pull this middle edge out here, we can go over here, let's do Shift D and temporarily. We'll go ahead and do a bevel edge loop complete. And if we want to, we can do another mirror and weld. And now I can hold down Alt and paint these and Q mesh these back. Um, if it's following the surface normal, which it should do, what you can do is instead go to mask polygroup ball. We can mask those, Control tap to invert, hit W, hold down Alt to go to unmash mesh center. We can reset it to the world with Alt. And then if you hold down Control and drag, that'll just extrude those straight out. And then we'll just do another crease, dynamic, and there we go. And if you want to, you know, again, you can play around with, you know, let's say crease, edge, hold down alt, and now you've got a little bit softer. And then we can go back to insert single edge loop and we can tighten that up as much as needed. And you're just box modeling at this point. In fact, if you want to soften these edges up, maybe. Whoa. Let's say crease, edge, hold down alt to uncrease like so, and I kind of, you know what, I like that look better. So I'm gonna go back here, I'll uncrease that, and now I've got that. Now, if you do wanna tighten these up just a little bit, again, insert single edge loop, put in some control loops, and we can just modify these corners as much as we need to. That would be one way to do it. And then that's if you want absolute control over the topology, as well as the creasing and the roundness of the corners. Um, Another thing you could do is use Project Primitive, which we can get into in a second if you guys want. Do you think Z-Modeler is efficient to do the level of Max Maya for model modeling? Do you or any other professionals use it for that? That's all I use it for. I don't do any poly modeling outside of ZBrush anymore. Um, it honestly, it just takes me too long. It's same thing with the Booleans. I used to do poly modeling in Modo and Maya, but hopping back and forth between the two programs, you can use GoZ, but it's a rare instance where I would need to get out of ZBrush. And there's a lot of stuff in ZBrush that I like to do, especially when you get into polygrouping, like the ability, like in Maya, for me to go, okay, let's group by normals and let's go ahead and Q-mesh these top faces here. And then we'll go ahead and crease everything the way I want. Um, let's go ahead and just do a crease. We'll go ahead and isolate these ones here and we'll do a crease tolerance here. And then we'll uncrease these edges. This would be this would take me a long time to do in Maya, for sure. Anything like that, or if I wanted to say, and you can you can do all of this stuff, I think. But let's say delete a single poly, and then we want to bridge two holes with a perfect circle with optimal curvature and resolution. And I just tap these two here, and it goes ahead and bridges those for me. And the only reason I'm isolating these ones right now is because um, I have, you know what, let's do, when I, when I send this over, here's another thing you can do. Here to here, I'm gonna hold down, let's do interactive curvature. So bridge two holes, if I do interactive curvature and interactive resolution, I can still keep it a circle, but I can dial in the resolution that I want. And I can also tap Alt, so I can change that poly group. Now I can isolate this poly group and go ahead and say crease. And now that'll be nice and crease and I'll still maintain my creasing here. If I don't care about that, and I just want my creasing based on angle threshold, I'll just go ahead and hit crease all, or crease all of these. And then I'll get that result. 
And then if I want to mix this, let's say with some live Boolean stuff, so I'm going to go to, um, let's isolate this, and we'll go to BI brush insert, and we can go to our Boolean meshes. You can bring in anything you'd like, but let's say we want to swap these out here. And we'll go ahead and do split. So under your subtool menu, the split menu, you can go split mass points. <clears throat> Move these down. I'm going to change this to smooth subdiv of two. There we go. So we've got this. Let's do crease level of two, smooth subdiv of three. And then I can make this subtractive, turn on my live Boolean. And now I've got these things that I can use as live Boolean and position them however I want. Drag out a copy here before I commit to that. Or I can go ahead and pull this out. And it's like, you know what? I don't like this one anymore. So let's go ahead and swap this out with any number of these things here. Let's go ahead and turn on polyframe so we can see what we're doing. So you can move this out and push this in. And now if you turn off polyframe, you're going to see this is the result we're getting. So you can very quickly do all sorts of cool array mesh type insert mesh brush stuff that would take me in a traditional 3D modeling program an exorbitant amount of time. My opinion, though. Cool. All right. Um, all caught up. So we can continue with this with Z, ZBrush. Let's turn off Live Boolean. Go out of edit mode. Let's see if we can bring this back real quick. So let's do something similar to this. We'll use Project Primitive. So we'll go ahead and say, save a screenshot over here. And we'll go to PolyMesh 3D. Let's go ahead and do another initialize. This time we'll initialize a Q, well, we'll do a Q cube again, and then deformation unify. And all unify does is just make it, you'll see when we do, go to a Q cube, it makes it pretty small. It's not a big deal. You can start there if you want to, but if you want to make it ZBrush primitive size when you start out, all you got to go is deformation unify. And then I'll go ahead and throw that up here. Now at this point, uh, we can start using Project Primitive, which is just hitting W, going into the gear. And now we have all these different deformers. And again, I'm halfway through, well, th two-thirds of the way through of my ZBrush 2018 What's New. I finally got a full day. I took some PTO and just got it done. And uh, so keep your eyes open for that this week. Um, go to Project Primitive here. And now we can just start making whatever shape we want. We don't have to project through this object if we don't want to, but we can if you want to kind of mix and match these shapes, let's say. So let's go ahead and turn off polyframe here. You can see we're projecting this underlying shape, which is right now a sphere through this object. And you see if we pull it way out, it's going to start um, wherever that cube was is going to start grabbing. See how it's kind of being influenced even when we go big? Where that's happening is over here on this blend is set to 0.29 by default. If I change that back down to zero, it's not going to blend at all. So it's just going to have a very harsh transition on these edges, but it's still projecting. Um, if you want to treat this more like an insert mesh brush, you can go here to this purple cone. If you're colorblind, it's this middle one on the left here. You can say new surface to one, and now you basically have an insert mesh brush. So make whatever shape you want. Um, here's the modifiers. These are your quadratic and your super quadratic when we go to the different object types here. So if you want to make it like a soft cube, you can actually go to a cube and start rounding the edges. So if you hold down shift, you'll snap incrementally through these values here. So you can go from like a diamond to a sphere to a square. And you'll notice, um, I don't know how, how deep you guys want to go into um, project printed. We can We can talk about it. Let's talk about it. Let's hit Control-N and clear my canvas. So we have a square right here. Uh, if we want to completely overpower this original square, or if we want to overpower it with any shape, let's say a sphere, we can go back to new surface of zero. And you know what? Let's just go ahead and do a full reset. That'll set it back to the middle. Oops. And now we can just scale this up. And if I keep scaling this up and we turn our blend down to zero, we can just take, project that original cube you can kind of see it. It's still, it's tessellating on the fly, uh, but you can see how we have a cube kind of in the surface, but now this cube has been completely changed or projected into a sphere at this point. So um, if you want to do a sphere with rounded or a cube with kind of rounded edges, you can start here. And if you want to, you can also go through here and non-uniformly scale. Another thing you might want to try is let's go ahead. You can, you can hit this white 
cone here to accept that and just continue to model. So if we scale this down, bring this up, and as soon as I cross this midpoint, it's going to cut inwards like this. So now we're cutting into here. So we can also, so we can still change this. If we want to make this not rounded, we want to make it sharp, you can do that. Or if you want to make it spherical, you can do that. If you want to cut a diamond into it, you can do that. And again, we have more primitive types right here. So we can, you know, let's soften those edges just a little bit. So we're kind of treating this like a Boolean insert mesh, but we're not having to go separate, you know, just like what we did earlier, where we separated them out, did a subtractive, turned on live Boolean. We don't need to do any of that. It's all just available to us on the fly. Um, and then again, once we pass that midpoint here, it'll be additive. And then once we pass this mid, so this bounding box here is our original bounding box that has our global setting. So if I move this way up, it disappears because there's nothing to project to anymore, but we have our global settings right here. And then we have these object specific settings on these cones right here. If I want to see this, all I got to do is go to that new surface again and change that to one. And now I can see it. And now it's just basically an insert mesh brush. And you can see we have different poly groups because we have the poly grouping on, I forget what cone that is, but uh, there's the primitive axis here, primitive types. Oh, um, so if we go back here, you can see now, so when I'm in a new surface, this is just like an insert mesh brush, but we're not going to be able to blend at all. You can see that option disappeared. If we change that back to primitive surface zero, which is not a new primitive, but a projection primitive, you can see now we have blend. So you can kind of blend between the two surfaces. You also have an opacity, so you can change the opacity of your new surface here. You also have a max displacement, which we'll talk about a little bit more. And now you have a tessellate. If you want to make the tessellation a little bit nicer, you can crank that tessellation up. And you also have apply grouping turned on now. So now we can switch between apply grouping off. So it's all in poly group. I would suggest just leaving that on just because if you want to go back in Z remesh to get a nicer mesh, um, it's just a little bit easier to do that. So there's our little shape here. Um, and you can see we went out of W, but we still have that orange icon there. That means it's still available to us to go back in and change. All you got to do is hit W again and we're back in deformation mode. Um, so if I wanted to, I can go ahead and like say, you know what, I like that, but I want two of them. So what I'm going to do is we're going to go over here to this X symmetry and we'll turn that on and you can follow this cone. So you know that X symmetry is going to be here and here. So if you turn on your floor, we have Z forward, which is that little blue line right there. And then X symmetry is this red line. It's across this way. And of course, Y symmetry, you don't see it but Y right here is up and down. So if you want to have this up and down on your object, just do Y symmetry. And then, let's see, is that going to go through all the way? Let's see. So X symmetry, you're not going to see any X symmetry right now, but if we move this over to the left, you're going to see it's going to split into two because now we're symmetrical across the X axis. And then if we move this forward and then turn on Z symmetry, you're going to see we have Z symmetry. So you can do this and then you can still modify these. You can take these little clipping dots and you can clip these in and get like a harsh transition on this side and a smooth transition on this side. Um, so you can kind of really quickly dial in little complex forms here. And let's say, you know what, we can even mix deformers. So let's say we like this, we'll go ahead and say accept. And now you can see this thing isn't orange anymore. There's not a deformer sitting in there waiting to be modified again. So let's turn on our polyframe. Let's go into our deformers and we'll choose extender and now we can just say, I want to put a little bit more surface in this middle. And we can also do um, Z resolution. We can add some more resolution in here. And then we can say on this one, let's go ahead and accept. And then you can continue using your deformer. So if we go back in here and go back into project primitive, you're going to see we have this primitive back available to us. So it's still that primitive we were using. It's got that soft edges that we dialed in. If you want to start from scratch, all you got to do is go here. To, you can reset the primitive. That'll shoot it back to the middle. Uh, you can also do a full reset, which gives us back our sphere that we started with. So here, and it also turns our blend. So I'm going to turn this blend down. I like usually like nice, harsh edges between my objects, um, unless I'm looking for something very specific. So if I go in here and I can say, you know, let's blend that just a little bit and kind of soften that transition. You can do that. Um, we can put in like a little spherical object here. And if we're like that, we can also clip down this top if we want kind of something flat to push that in. Um, alternatively, you could say, you know what? We can accept that and then we can drag out on, whoops, sorry. Uh, and you know what? 
don't get in my bad habit of going into accept. If you're in project primitive, and you know we can put in another sphere here, and this one I'm going to clip the sides in, like so, so we can kind of get something kind of looking like that. We'll turn that blend down again. Um, let's say this is the project primitive that I want. Uh, if I like this, I'm just going to tap this little white one up here. That'll go ahead and hit accept for me. And now I can continue, you know, taking this sphere here and then modifying its values here. Oh, by the way, when I move this in from the side, if you do shift, that'll do it from both sides. So just so you can start dialing that in if you need to. Uh, I didn't do it on this one, so it's a little bit lopsided. And again, if I want to do a full reset, I can just reset back to the original. And then here's my sphere. We can change this one to say a rectangle. And if I pull this out, it'll kind of switch to a clipping here. So I'm going to change that. So you can actually use this square or this um, rectangle we have. If you want to see it, we'll go to new surface of one. And we're using this rectangle here to kind of just start clipping stuff back. So you can do that if you want. And we can hit accept. And then this one, let's talk about primitive types here. So let's go to new surface again. And then this primitive type, I'm going to hold down shift and go back to 0.5. And you can swap these out as needed. So if I want to go to primitive type, say 3, that'll give us a cylinder. We can change the axis that the cylinder's on by grabbing this blue one here. And now we can scale it in, drop it in. Instead of new surface, we'll go to projected surface. And now we can just kind of cut in this thing here. Um, if you wanted to do like a radial symmetry type thing, we can play around with that a little bit. So we have X, Y, and Z symmetry we talked about. You also have radial symmetry. So if I grab this white one here and say we want, I don't know, nine versions of this thing. Um, right now we don't have an axis chosen, so I'm going to choose the Y axis. And then I'm going to go ahead and scale this down and move this out. Uh, this one might be a little large. This might be a bad idea. Let's do, let's take our undo slider right here. Let's give ourselves a little bit more room to work with here. So we've got this object that we started with here. Oops. Gizmo 3D, so it's orange, so I can go back into project primitive. And we've got this shape here. So I'm gonna go ahead and scale this down just a little bit. And we're gonna say, I don't want X and Z symmetry. I want Y symmetry with radial count up. And then as I drag this out, you're gonna see we now have radial symmetry here. So I can push this in a little bit more. We can scale it down. And now we can change this radial count to whatever count we want to. So we can go ahead and dig these in. And again, feel free to change these shapes to whatever you'd like. Uh, let's turn the opacity down so we get a full cut in. Let's take this primitive shape here and we'll crank it up so we get a nice sharp cut on these corners. Or you can, you can blend it a little bit. There we go. Or if you want to make them perfectly spherical, just hold down Shift, go to 0.5. And now we have those cut in. And if you're happy with that, you can say accept and then keep doing it. So on this one here, we're still projecting this spherical primitive in here. So if I go here, we can now punch that in and we're good. So let's go ahead and say accept. And now we've got this nice complex little modeled shape here. We've got all the polygroups here if we want to zero mesh this thing. Um, and you can just have fun just kind of making shapes. And of course you can use, you can still use, go like brush insert, go back to our booleans here. We'll grab this one. And as we drag this out, we'll hold down shift so it constrains. We'll do split mass points. Let's go ahead and do a quick mirror, mirror and weld, throw this below, do subtractive, turn on live boolean. And now we can go through here. We can hit D so it's nice and smooth. We can hold down control or uh, we can turn on this uh, little sticky one. We can hold down control, then we can hit one to replay last. And again, hit D for dynamic subdivisions here. Or if we don't like these, we can hit W and we can just swap it out with whatever we'd like. Um, let's turn on polyframe here. There we go. So now you've got this one like we were playing with earlier. Let's do another quick mirror, mirror and weld. Mirror is deformations mirror, and then mirror and weld is geometry modified topology mirror and weld. So this is just a little bit faster. And we'll go ahead and drag out a copy of this. Just hold down control, drag it out. Let's turn off sticky. Um, and if you want to cut a panel line through, that might be fun too. What I can do, <clears throat> I'm going to go ahead and go in. So you can go to BI brush insert primitives. I have my own custom primitive menu. Um, if you go to my YouTube channel, 
and you go to playlists, you're going to have uh, ZBrush 4.8, what's new. This will go over a lot of the new R8 functionality, including not just setting up a in multi-insert brush, but also how to kind of go through here and you can delete and move and copy and make your v vector displacement brushes and all that good stuff. But long story short, I'm just going to go ahead and grab a cube. Let's do a cube mid here. And if you've watched the Pixelogic channel, turn on Xsymmetry so we can drop one. Uh, let's turn off Light Boolean here. So we can drop one right down the middle here. We'll do Shift D and then we'll do right now. If I turn on Light Boolean, you're going to see because this one's subtractive that I'm inserting that on, it's already acting, behaving as a subtractive mesh, which is fine. Um, and of course you can hold down control and drag out a copy, or you can even uh, duplicate this off and move it around. But for now, you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to split mass point. So I still have this one selected and then we can make this into a cutting plane. And if you want to see what you're doing, you just turn on polyframe while live boolean's on and you can kind of see this. So we can go here. And if you've been watching the, there's a Pixelogic Summit. I want to say it's Pixelogic Summit. I think that's what they call it. Uh, Chi Vang gave a really good demonstration on stuff like this. So you can hold down control and you can um, hold down control alt and then control drag this out. Oops. There we go. Um, so you can just slice panels through here as much as you want to. Um, you can modify this thing. So we can go in here and say like, bevel edge loop complete. Oops, let's do shifty. If you want to see this in action and make it a little bit easier to work with, you can just go into solo mode. So you can bevel both of these lines here. And then we can say mask poly loop and you can mask this entire poly loop, invert that. And then we'll just move this forward and we'll scale it in a little bit. And of course, while we're making all these changes, if you go out of solo mode, you're going to see we're cutting into that panel here. So we can still modify this thing. You know, let's just set it up here. You can also go through here. Uh, remember in your crease menu, we can crease all, and then we can turn on dynamic. Then we'll say crease level of say two, smooth so div of three, and that'll start smoothing out those corners. Um, another thing you can do is you can, and you can, you know, say crease level of three, that'll, or four, smooth so div of five, that'll tighten those corners up a little bit more. Um, you can also, let's go ahead and turn dynamic off if we go into polyframe and solo again, everywhere where I have a crease, and let's get rid of this middle one here, we don't need that. Insert single edge loop, hold down Alt. Um, you can go down here to geometry, crease menu, you can change this bevel width, and that'll bevel all of these creases here. There's also a bevel deformer. If you go into W, you can use this bevel deformer here um, for some cool bevel stuff. But we have that now, so if we go out of solo mode, we're getting nice bevels, if we hit D, you can see they're nice and soft and you can always go back to this bevel width and change these on the fly. So here's a nice round one like so. Cut all the way around. So you get a pro, she gave a very good demonstration on that. Alrighty. Um, I might be getting a little bit behind on my comments. I apologize. I also apologize. I know that was fast. But like I said, look at all this that I've got. I've got it all recorded, ready to start editing, ready to put up on YouTube. So everything I just showed you, I'm going to go into more detail. It'll be more structured. You can follow along. You can pause. I mean, you can still go back to this video once it's up on Pixelogic's Twitch and YouTube and go back through. Um, but give me the rest of this week and I'll get you all of that and very much more uh, coming soon. Cool, cool. Beep, bop, beep, boop, boop. Nick Zuccarello. How you doing, man? It's been a long time. <laughs> um, what else we got? Let's see. Uh, did I miss anything? Mm -hmm. uh, working on a project which contains armor plate around the body, which is made of small squares, but each piece overlapping on the next ones. Any tips for that? Love your streams. Thanks for the kind words. RB Gaming. So, yeah, armor plating. What I would do, speaking of Nick Zuccarello, let's hit the comma key and let's make some armor on this tool right here. There's a Nick Z human male average. This is my go-to if I just want to do some quick human demo stuff. It's a great base mesh to start with. If we go over here, you're going to see we have a skull. If we want to do a little bit of anatomy stuff, we've got out, eyes outer, eyes inner, the floor. Any of this stuff you don't need, like if I just need the body, I can go over here and say delete other. 
and now we're just left with the body. And Nick is also kind enough to go under layers. Where's that at? There it is. Um, so you're going to see we have a layer system in here. Whoops, I didn't want to record. You can move the arms up and down as well as arms side to side. And now some of these you're going to you can over crank them and it's going to do some wacky stuff. So here you're just going to stay within this range here. Um, we'll go ahead and leave these at zero. You can also do, let's make that zero. We can also do mouth open. So if you want to go through and dial these in, um, you can if you'd like. Let's do a let's do a slightly open mouth here. And once we're happy with this, we can hit bake all. That'll get rid of our layers. And now we can go ahead and start um, doing some cool stuff to this. Uh, another thing you can do for this, for example, if we say uh, hit X to go across X symmetry here, you can also do a mirror and weld if you want symmetrical polygroups on either side. Um, so here's our object. We have polyframe on. If you go into W here you can go right back into what we were messing with earlier, which is project primitive. And you can use, let's, um, let's turn off colorize. Here we go. You can use project primitive to start um, doing some very subtle or not changes to here. So right now it's pretty harsh. So we can change that blend to just kind of do it like just a very nice subtle change. So you can go through here and you can start moving this sphere around. We have symmetry turned on still. Dang it. Let's do a full reset. Full reset. There we go. Yeah, now we're looking good. So if we want to put a little inner tube around here. So a little anatomy lesson. I'm sure nobody really needs. Men tend to carry their weight. You collect fat right around your belly, right around your obliques right there. Um, so if you want to put in a little bit of pudge right there, a little dad bod, and if you want to, again, you can clip in through the back. So, you know, if you're getting a little bit too much back there, you can clip that in and then change this blending here, as well as the opacity and the here. So you can kind of just so, so it's like subtly dial that in. We can say, accept we like that. And we can go back up here. And also you're going to have a little bit of tissue right in here where you're going to be a little pudgier. We can say, accept. And then we can go up here to the head and you can start making model changes too, like little subtle ones. Now, again, this is project primitive. So if you go over here and you want to start making it a little more square, you want to square that jaw out, we can do a nice soft square jaw. We can scale this down and you can just go through here and you can start like scaling this out. You want to make them a little more Frankenstein. We can move this up and we can go to the top here. Let's go ahead and make sure we're here and here. And then you can make this a little bit more, it's here it is round, because we're doing the spherical primitive. And then we can go here, we can make that even harsher. He's like a max headroom type guy. So you can kind of make him just a little more Frankenstein. Dial this in a little bit, like so, hit accept. So you can use project primitive to do modifications to your uh, character here. Um, but armor. Trying to think the best way. I'd probably use nano mesh, nano mesh layering. You could use a ray mesh. Um, God, you could use, if you don't care about the topology or editability, you could also use surface noise with like, like a chain mail type thing. There's a couple different ways we could skin this cat. Um, let's do nano mesh. So I want to work with this topology here, but I want to make some armor. So a couple things I can do, I can duplicate this off. I can say, you know what, give me armor in this area. And now I can put armor in this area. Let's hit X go across X symmetry. Um, if you want a little bit nicer, you can hold down control and you can say, you know what, I want a breastplate and a back plate here. Like this. And now we can hit, uh, if you hit control W, it'll give you a poly group here. And then you can isolate this poly group and you can try and do like maybe a polish by features, but it's gonna start, um, messing with this a little bit with the closed circle it is going to maintain your forms a little bit better than if you do the open circle uh, by the way polished by features um it's another deformation right down in here so polished by features open circle we can really kind of smooth those edges out and the entire forms um, an alternative to that if you just have this masked i might be inclined to go to geometry edge loop do edge loop mask border and that'll slice through and give you pretty nice edges here and then if you want more control over those borders let's go ahead and do a geometry modify topology delete hidden and we're going to go to masking 
mask border. So you can see we masked the border. Let's hit, um, hold on. There, you can see that a little bit better. So mask, we mask the border if you want to. You can even grow that mask. Control tap to invert that mask, or you can hit inverse. And now we can do, with just these open borders, edges selected, we can go back into that polish by features. And let's do closed circle so it maintains our forms a little better. And the reason I'm doing that is so if I go down to Z remesh, here's my Z remesh settings. You can also go to geometry, Z remesher. Um, the lower your adaptive size, if we crank this up and say half, that'll be half the geometry that's on the screen, you're gonna see, uh, uh, you know, that's pretty even. But if you wanna ensure that the squares are as squares, they're gonna get change that adaptive size down to zero, and that'll favor uniform squares over trying to build in edges for the form, which we're not having a huge deal with on this object in particular, but just in case that's an issue for you. And then we can start putting in armor. Now, if we wanted to just do like overlap any, we can just keep hitting zero mesh half to get simpler geo if we want to. And the reason I'm doing this is if we turn on our Nick Z humanoid again, you can see we have our shirt. So at this point we could just do a Q mesh polygroup ball and say, ah, he's got a shirt on. We can do under your geometry crease menu. You can do that crease PG we talked about earlier and hit D and now you can go through here. You can even inflate along this polygroup here. Just hold down shift like so. And if you want to smooth these edges out or bevel these edges a little bit more, you can go like we talked about earlier. You can go down here to this bevel um, crease, beep, 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 bevel width, and you can bevel those edges. Uh, what I would be more inclined to do probably in this case would be our whole crease level is say three, smooth subdiv of four, and that'll kind of soften those transitions. Let's do crease level of two, smooth subdiv of four, D and shift D, and now we can go through here, and this is just a preview, so we can go through here and modify this however we'd like. If we want to go through here and say, you know what, let's poly group this poly loop and then Q mesh all this out. Or we can do multiple here. And we can do both of these. He's got a pretty sweet Jetson shirt on. You can do that. But the whole reason I did this, let's undo all the way back, is just so I have this geometry available to me. So I can now go into B, um, oh, BZM, Z Modeler Brush. You're gonna see if I hover over a face, we can do insert nano mesh, polygroup ball, and now we can start inserting our armor plating on top of this. Right now it's just a cube. Um, if you want, you can go down here to nano mesh and you can say, um, you can show placement off and that'll get rid of the shirt underneath. I just found out that if you have dynamic turned on, show placement won't turn that off. So FYI. Um, but you can always go into edit mesh and you can edit this however you'd like. So if you want to like say make this flatter, let's go into solo mode here. And then we'll do a quick mirror and weld and we'll say bevel, edge loop complete. And then we'll hold down control and alt and we'll pull this out. And then we'll say, you know, that's the armor shapes I want. Or we can get fancy, we can say like insert single edge loop here. Um, if you want to make that straight across, hold down shift. And that'll make it straight, and then poly loop, poly group, and then Q mesh, poly group all, and then there we go. That's that's our new shape, right? So we'll go out of edit mesh, and now our shape's been updated here. So now we have the overlapping armor. If you want to show placement, you can still use this underlying mesh for like chain mail or whatever later on. Um, but now we can go down here to alignment. We can say align to normal, so they're all pointing the same way, and then we can do our X, Y, and Z rotation to kind of merge these down, you can change the size as much as you need. So you can kind of start, oops, overlapping these. Oh boy, I'm having a hard time. There we go, X rotation. So you can overlap these, that's kind of, whew. overlap these however you'd like. Um, and of course, you don't have to start with a cube and go in and edit it. You can make your own nano mesh with any brushes that you want. Again, the ZBrush 4R8, what's new goes over all that. I'll copy this to you guys. One more time, playlist. Um, that goes over all that. Now these are just instances. So if I turn on show placement again, let's go into solo mode. As I move this geometry around, you're gonna see those things follow. And in fact, if I hover over a face, for example, and we start alt paint, oops, we start alt painting, that's gonna get rid of these because we told it polygroup all and these are now a different polygroup. So you can change the stuff as needed. 
Um, but well, like I was saying before, you can start with another, let me just show you. Eh, you know what? Go watch that video. Go watch Go watch the um, Zebras 4 8 what's new videos. Um, uh, also, if you want to change these completely to another object, one easy way to do it is to go into uh, back into Edit Mesh. So here's our object. And just like we did before, if I go to Brush, Insert, um, let's go to the Insert Multi Mesh Spaceship here. And there's lots of cool stuff in here. So I can hit M and I can choose one, or I can go up here and choose one. If I hit W, to go into gizmo mode and then swipe through here. You're gonna see we can just swap that mesh out completely with anything we want. So let's say we want our armor to be more like, do we have something masked in here? There we go, make sure you're unmasked. Um, want our armor to be more like this. So we can say, you know what? Okay, out of edit mesh. And now we have that mesh available to us. We may have to rotate this stuff around and change a little bit of our X, Y, and Z offsets. Let's go back into edit mesh and let's say unify. Deformation Unify. And maybe we can even hold down Shift and just shoot this that way. Go back out of Edit Mesh. And let's say these rotations are back to zero. Offsets are back to zero. So now, extra, there we go. So now we can rotate these ones. We can do our Y offset a little bit. We can change our size. If you want to fill every single square, you can say Fit. You may have to do your rotations uh, again, or fill. That'll fill each one of those polygons. Uh, usually I'll stick with proportional here. Or if you want it to be random, go down here to random distribution, just crank that up, and now you can just fill it up. Make sense? Uh, how can I make a custom menu? Uh, this, the playlist I just linked you guys, go to the Intro to ZBrush Part 2, and that'll walk you through custom playlists, our not playlist, custom uh, menus, like this one I use here. You can see we have a PAV custom here. Um, hotkeys, assigning hotkeys to custom menus. Also, if you do, I'm not saying you should use it at all, but just in case, um, I can also link you guys. <laughs> Give me a second. There we go. Um, if you go to my Gumroad or Cube Brush page, you can go all the way to the very bottom and you can, oh, not, not on Cube Brush, but look for the one that says Enter to ZBrush Files. And that's, it's not a paid for download. You can download it for free and it has my custom menu in there and instructions on how to install it. But I would really highly suggest just making your own because you never, what I use all the time may not be what you use all the time. So. Cool. Thanks for showing up, everybody. Uh, again, I'm behind. I'm always behind. Um, is that function with the primitive shapes available in 4R8? No, that's new to ZBrush 2018. Cool, cool. Yeah, and so Gary says, uh, 20 plus tutorials in my new video feed on YouTube. So I can't control that. I think in your notification settings, you can dial in like how many notifications you get from me. But what I'm going to try and do with the ZBrush 2018 videos is to, as I edit them, just throw them up every morning. So it should be like maybe three, four or five a day as opposed to here's 50. Hey, BFVG Spectre, thanks for showing up. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So if he's, if he's having a hot, Hot day, you can vent these things. Easy enough. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah, and like you guys said, hair card placement, um, all that stuff. Uh, oh, speaking of, if you missed it, you can also go to my Pavlovich workshop here, and we did, what do we call him? Gogeta? Um, the uh, Dragon Ball Z hair we did. So you can watch that. I'll link you guys to that too. So here's my Pavlovich workshop page. Um, and this is mine specifically, but if you go to the Pixelogic channel on YouTube, this is everybody. So if you go like say to videos, you're gonna see everybody, really, really talented people in here. So, and also Joseph Dress as ZBrush, Paul Gabriel's, um, I forget what it's called, but I usually watch those two for sure. And then everybody else on here is, you know, super good. Here's, uh, here's, oh, did you know that? There's where he's using Project Primitive. So you can watch that. I need to watch that. 
I think I missed that one. Hopefully I didn't mess anything up. Let's check on Facebook here. Um, if I have a super big mesh and the move tool doesn't really move it because it's not ZBrush scale, uh, but I don't want to use Unify because it won't match with my low poly when baking, how can I manage this? Or how do you recommend working with scales? So what I would do is I would go into Z plugin Scale Master, there it is. And this should be loaded by with ZBrush by default and you can set the scene scale, um, ZBrush scale Unify. So you can set, let's see, you can also click on Scale Master. That'll walk you through how to use this. Here's a YouTube video on how to use it. Um, and then you can click through here and it'll tell you how to set this up so that you can work, I think, a little bit more within ZBrush's parameters, but also export and still have it be the correct scale. Uh, I don't use this a lot, so I'm hesitant to walk you through it. In fact, I'm not going to, but that would be where I would start, would be Scale Master would get you set up. Cool. Is there a way to transfer this video on TV? Um, yeah, so if you have a Chromecast, you can, if you're on YouTube, on Pixelogic YouTube channel, I'm streaming on there right now, so you can shoot that over to your TV. Um, or if you just have a laptop and it's full screen, you can just HDMI out and then shoot it over to your TV as well. Outside of that, I'm not sure. Twitch probably has something you could do. Cool. Do you run any online courses? Um, besides this, I teach at Gemini here in Austin. Um, I also do, not this term, but I do a CG Master Academy, www.cgma.com. I do a concept for, uh, what do I call it, ZBrush for Concept and Iteration. Um, I'm revamping that class. The videos are getting a little long in the tooth, so I'm re-recording and re-kind of distributing the information to make it a little bit more... It's weird. When I teach, I want to give the people the freedom to make whatever they want, but sometimes too much freedom sends people into like a spiraling, um, they get unsure and they're not, they're not quite sure what kind of problems they want to solve and stuff. So what I'm trying to do is kind of narrow the focus just a little bit. Um, I don't want to give them an object to model, but I will give them object types to model maybe. And I think that'll help um, kind of guide people along, you know, how to use ZBrush quickly and efficiently so that you can get stuff in engine quickly and efficiently. Cool. All right. Am I all caught up? Uh, Facebook. Okay. Newest is towards the top. All right. I think we're good to go. Um, what did I want to work on today? What time is it? Seven o'clock. We got about, I don't think I have to leave early today. So we got about another hour, although it is getting hot in here. Whew. I'm going to open this door. Ooh, got my new office set up and my computer steams this place up. Alrighty, so let's say, uh, let's go ahead. So if I want to clean out ZBrush, I can go to Preferences, Initialize, or you can go down here and say Delete All. And you can just delete all these subtools you're not using. Or you can just manually go through and just delete stuff you're not using. By the way, if I were to go to File, Save, this would save it as a project, and all this stuff over here would be saved at the same time. So if we go here, we've got our Donut Steen still loaded. So we can delete all those. Here's our entire ZBrush spaceship concept sculpt. Um, we can delete all those. Cool. Uh, BFG says, I personally find following along with an objective is the best for me due, due to doing this as a hobby, not being an artist. That's another good point, is sometimes it's easier to take a concept and learn the software doing your 2D concept. So. Also, what I'll try to do is have them, you know, if you have a concept you like or you've created something in 2D, let's go ahead and recreate it in 3D so that you can see how useful 3D is as a tool, even for 2D artists. Um, if you watch Tony Leonard, we talked, we just, you know, Pixelogic's uh, ZBrush here. Um, Tony Leonard does a lot of 2D to 3D kind of stuff and rendering. We've gone over that a little bit too on my channel. If you go to my playlist here and there is a, we did a ZBrushGuides.com um, ZBrush Guides is Pablo Munoz Gomez's ZBrush Guides for stylized rendering. Do I have those? Let's see. Material. Uh, I don't. Mm. Let me make a note of that. Hold on. Oops. Uh, 
how do I not have this stuff copied over? Stylized mats. You know where I might have them? Give me a sec. Sorry. 2018. Yes, here we go. Okay, um, so what I'm basically doing is if you go to C, Program Files, Pixel Logic, we have Zebras 2018, and this is all in here. So right now in my Zebra materials, I only have a couple. If I go back to Zebras 4R8, you're going to see we have Z materials in here, and I have this comic style rendering folder, and in here we have a bunch of Z materials from, again, zebrushguides.com. Um, you can download, let's just go there real quick, I'll show you. So zebrushguides.com. This is, again, Pablo Munoz Gomez's um, tutorial site. And if you go to tutorials, ebooks, you can download for free this uh, comic style renderer right here. And we basically, on my channel, we just went through, if you click on this, click on this here. Something just dinged at me. Um, we still streaming? We still streaming. Um, we go through, I think there's 15 videos on how to set up these materials. So you can do that. You can follow these videos and you can also follow along the PDF guide, which we have open right there through his website. So anyway, long story short, we can take this comic style rendering here and then we can go to um, 2018 Z materials. We can paste that in here. So now we have the Z materials in that folder. Oops, well, I had nothing open in here. So if ZBrush ever does crash, the good news is it's not, in this case, we're not really gaining anything, but what you can do, so this is also something we're gonna do is kind of do some bebop rocksteady type stuff, make this guy. I had that loaded up in case I felt like it, but I don't know if I'm really feeling like it. Um, but if Zebra server does crash, it's really good about saving um, your recovered Z tools or your recovered Z projects. I'll show you where that is in just a second. There we go. And I need to reposition the screen just a tiny bit. Okay, watch your eyes. Uh, it's going to be glitchy. There we go. So uh, you see, we don't really lose anything. We have our recovered Z tool here that we were working with. It's not important. Um, you can also see my demo stuff that I was doing for my videos. In fact, if we go to load tools, I think we we're messing with like a moose head. I think I did a quick moose head stream. Um, recording 2018, what's news, working files. There we go. So we kind of did a quick Sculptures Pro. That's something we haven't really talked about on this channel or on my stream, but there's Sculptors Pro in here. So you turn this on and you can go ahead and just you can get rid of these things. And let's go ahead and hit W, control tap this because we have a poly group right here. And now you can just totally smooth those things out here. Or you can smooth them down so Sculptors Pro, and you can even smooth in the middle of something and have it just kind of blob out. And we can change this to say BS, everybody, everybody's favorite, the spiral brush here. And if you make these smaller and you hold down Alt, you can go through here and we can get like a fractal, we can keep getting smaller and smaller and we're dynamically updating the tessellation on the fly. So you can get some really cool looks really quickly. Like so, um, what was I talking about? Oh yeah, so let's say we want to do a cartoon render of this thing. So I'm going to hit the comma key, and under material I now have a comic style rendering folder, and then in here we can swap this material out with, although I probably didn't want to do that because that re that'll replace my matcap gray. That's right, we can initialize. Um, so now we can play with some of these settings here. So we'll go over here to our material, drag that over, modifiers. And so now we can kind of get a cool render of that. Uh, if you do sci-fi stuff, we can bring in, say, where's my armor or spaceships. 
you can render those out. Oh, you know what we were? So here's like a little sci-fi creature. Let's also do, uh, we were doing the, um, the ship we were talking about. And you can use poly paint with this as well. Um, and you can swap these out. So, you know, if we hit comma key here, we can do like a Batman style render here. You can use BPR render with shadows and stuff and set those up so you can get really nice 2D looks. Also, you probably want to turn on perspective. And if you want to make this really dramatic, let's go into our draw menu here and we'll say angle of view. We'll crank that up, turn perspective on. So as I change this, so here's like orthographic pretty much. And then if I crank this up, whoa, it gets a little crazy. You can see it gets more and more extreme like so, and BPR into this. Um, will you make a new tour video for your new workspace? All I really did was move what I had originally into a different room. Um, took a little bit longer than I thought because this room was just filled with stuff I needed to organize. Um, but speaking of, if you do want to see my setup, like people are always interested in my specs, so we'll say, Properties here, AMD Ryzen Threadripper 1950X, uh, 128 gig of RAM, uh, GeForce, uh, NVIDIA GeForce 1080 Ti for my graphics card. And if you want to mess with your memory settings, I don't personally, but you can go into your preferences, mem, there we go. And you can change all sorts of cool stuff in here. Um, also, speaking of Sculptress, uh, if you ever do hit your Sculptress limit, mine is set by default to 5 million polygons. So when I'm using Sculptress, it'll tell, it'll warn me if I go above 5 million per subtool, which I've, I'll have i never probably run into um, the way I work, but just in case you need to know that. And again, that'll all be in those videos that I'm making. We're getting close. We're getting close. Just need another week. Uh, so yeah, there's that. Garrett, you are late. Oh, we got another hour left, though. Um, as she says, hello, Michael. Any online ZBrush courses that provide ZBrush software, too, for learning, like yours or Shane Olson or any other courses, or you must have your own software? Um, you can use, so ZBrush has a 45-day trial. So you can just get get your training all set up and then use the 45-day trial to go through and use ZBrush and kind of learn it that way. Uh, if you go to the Pixelogic website, I think... They'll have that for you. I, I just closed a bunch of windows accidentally. There we go. Here and here. Sorry. Um, yes, so go to also, if you, you know, like we were talking about Z plugins in here, uh, occasionally I'll use this Clean Tool Master. In fact, I have a little Clean Tool Master set up right there. Um, if you want to know where that is, whoops, hold on. There we go pixelogic.com and then you can download your um, 45 day trial I believe I think it's 45 maybe it's 30 I forget don't quote me on that I think there is a trial though you can use it learn ZBrush also on here where it has learn ZBrush you can go to the um, Z classroom training it's really good uh, there's third party training in here there's schools in here so you can just go through here and uh, that'll be places where you can find that of course like we've been linking you my my YouTube channel here has a ton. So you've got a playlist here. We've got my live stream. We've got Enter to ZBrush 1, 2, and 3. We've got ZBrush 4, 8, What's New. This week, we're going to have ZBrush 2018, What's New. Uh, what else? Sci-Fi Weapon Process, you guys might like. Keyshot ZBrush Bridge. Um, 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 um. Yeah, Marvelous Designer and ZBrush, if you want to use those together. Uh, ZBrush and Fusion 360, if you're a hard surface CAD guy. Make a Pokeball, stylized modeling, all that good stuff. And if you want to download these videos instead of watching them on YouTube, go to my Cube Brush or Gumroad page and you can just download them for free there. Anyway, um, so yeah, there we go. Let's say, let's go to Skin Shader 4. And let's do, instead of Matcap Gray, we'll do Matcap Pearl. That'll kind of highlight my edges a little bit more. What are your recommendations on HS tutorials, courses in ZBrush, hard surface tutorials? Um, 
on here on my playlist page the where is it at the um, sci-fi pistol series this is basically the pistol that I made for ZBrush for our 8 beta here so if I load that up um, where is that at pistol let's load this up here we walk through how to make this thing and then also we go into how to get it out of ZBrush and uh, into Painter for uh, texturing and stuff or you can texture it in here and throw it in Keyshot if you'd like um, so that could be something. Also, something that people don't often go through but is, I think, useful is there's a boot tutorial on here. And this one, when I'm modeling a boot, uh, it's actually very hard surface up until the very end. In fact, let's go to another resource. Give me a second. My profile. Wait for it. There we go. So on my art station page, if you scroll down, so you can see here's a sci-fi weapon, and there's just usually it's just like more screenshots of stuff that we're making. But if you go into the commander high-res process here, um, this is what one of the things I made on my CG Master Academy course is just making this high-res guy along with the students. And if I scroll all the way down, you're gonna see this is where we start out, just kind of blocking this in. You can see how goopy these boots are. And then we slowly just start refining the boots. And then eventually what I'll do, once we have the concept done, and this is for any object, but for the boot specifically, um, you can see we go from that mushy kind of concept in to just rebuilding this. And then just going, I mean, this is all just hard surface modeling right here. And then once you get to here, you just throw in a few insert mesh brushes, uh, wrinkle it up a little bit with a standard brush, and you're good to go. So that process specifically is the ZBrush boot tutorial. You can go through here and here's all 18 videos on this and you can also use this thing here if you click this little full size thing. You can see there's a little JPEG you can follow along with. That'll go through the process of making this boot. And it's fairly hard surface. But if you want hard surface, hard surface, um, here's a speed version of that, which isn't super hard surface, but um, there it is, Sci-Fi Weapon Pistol Series. So there's 42 videos in this one. And you can make this thing from concept. So there's the concept I did. And then here's using all the tools and then here. Now this is only Zebra, up to ZBrush 4 r 8 So nothing about ZBrush 2018 in there. Um, but it should still be useful, I think. Um, Maro on Facebook says, hey Michael, thank you. No problem. Thanks for showing up. Could you advise me a tutorial showing me the correct workflow from modeling hard surface game in Asset ZBrush and then texturing it in Substance Painter? Um, I got you covered here. So under the sci-fi weapon process, we talk about how to use ZBrush to create our game res and then uh, go into Painter here. Um, another one, so we were talking about that ZBrush ship that we made. That's this one. If you want to also go f use GoZ to use Ho Houdini, Here's 32 videos, and don't be scared by that or by Houdini in general. It's a very quick process to get this high-res ZBrush file um, into Houdini for my game res and then exporting that out to whatever you want, Marmoset or Painter or whatever you want to. Um, so that's the result of this. This is the, the textured version of my ZBrush sculpt, and it was all automated. I didn't sit there and hand do anything. Um, it went very, very quickly. But you can check those out. Um, you know what? Hold on. I'll make it easy for you. Here is my art station page. You can go through that. Um, I'm not going to go through it here on this live stream. This is a Pixelogic live stream. I do use ZBrush for all my modeling purposes, um, but outside of ZBrush, you can, you know, ZBrush works is very compatible with anything you use. So, of course, there's a lot of techniques you can go through in there, but I'm not just I'm just not gonna cover it on this channel specifically. Cool. Um, let me get caught up real quick. Uh converge those recommendations for new hardware optimal for ZBrush. Um no, I'm not much of a hardware guy. I mean I I like good hardware. I can appreciate good hardware, but my hardware recommendations probably aren't gonna be I mean I like I said before my personal specs, let's see, properties, 
are the, uh, you know, like I said before, AMD Ryzen thread over 1950X. So we've got lots of processing power and then a lot of RAM. We got 128 gig of RAM. And then, so ZBrush specifically is a fairly um, CPU and RAM intensive program. It's going to use your CPU a lot. It's going to use your RAM a lot. And also in this new Z plugin here, if we go to Polygroup it, I think Polygroup it's a little more GPU intensive. So here in Polygroup it, click on here and we can change this and it'll start polygrouping. Now this is a very organic model, um, not really set up for polygrouping purposes, but um, that's another really cool option. But yeah, specific, uh, I'm not positive. Cool. All right, we good. Um, let's see. I guess we can do, and so a lot of this stuff too, this was made in ZBrush 4, maybe even before R8, but some of this stuff you could do with Project Primitive. Of course, you can Z model this stuff, increase as needed. Um, but this was, again, another thing 100% created in ZBrush. The organic stuff, um, if you go to my Gumroad QBrush page, there's a Reptile ZBrush series, and we talk about how to make this guy specifically. Um, but also, you know, how to make and render this armor is a kind of a, a little bit on there. So it's not super hard surfacey specifically, but again, you can do, there's a lot of different ways. And this is why I like ZBrush. There's a lot of different ways to create this look as opposed to other programs where it's like, you just got to sub D model the hell out of it. And then maybe go in and Boolean afterwards if your Boolean's working that program correctly. Um, but ZBrush, you can sculpt it out first. You can harden your edges, you can polygroup it, you can Z-remesh it, you can um, use the live boolean system, you can use insert mesh brushes with live boolean, or you can make it dynamesh, you can stamp this stuff in if you want to with uh, masking and all sorts of really cool easy stuff. So very, very, it's a lot of options, super powerful program, so there's a lot of stuff that you can use, so that might be a little intimidating to be like, well, there's so many ways I can solve this problem, I just want one way. One way to solve a problem is useful for a beginner, where it's like, okay, I feel like I'm learning, I can use this one thing to solve this one problem, but unfortunately, that's only giving you your one tool, your hammer. But if you want to be a good guy who does a lot of things, and you know, on a construction site, you want more tools than just a hammer. You don't want to replace a car engine or, you know, whatever else you would do, uh, dig <laughs> a, a trench with a hammer. You want a shovel, right? So you're going to have to learn different techniques to give you more optimal, efficient ways to create and problem solve. And that's where the other options come in. And that's where, you know, the learning curve kind of goes up, but it's not impossible. It's actually fun. So let's, uh, we'll go back to, let's go ahead and delete all this. We don't need this taking up room. And we don't need this taking up room. So let's talk a little bit more about, we were talking about this, I think, like making some of these shapes. And we use project primitive a little bit. Uh, we can use, there's so many things we could use in here. Um, Or we can do some organic modeling. That's kind of fun too. And this is like uh, for like 3D printing and stuff. Also ZBrush Core, if you want to kind of just dip your toe into ZBrush, you can use ZBrush Core. Let's go ahead and add a little bit more resolution to this. So what I'm doing here is you're gonna see I have very low resolution in these areas. What I can do, instead of going through and dynameshing at a higher resolution, I can just use my smooth brush. In fact, if I hold down Shift, drop my Z intensity down to zero, I won't deform the object at all, but what I can do is you can see I'm adding tessellation in these areas where I need it. So now I can go through and automatically add tessellation with the new snake hooks here. You can just drag out and you're going to see it tessellates on the fly, uh, especially with like snake sphere. You can go through and just continue to just, you know, just keep dragging out and it'll keep uh, making new geometry as you pull. So. We want to talk a little bit more about that. Um, let's go ahead and let me get rid of that. So what we're going to do is I'm going to hit W and control tap this polygroup just to kind of protect it. 
control tap, there we go. And then I'm gonna go back into Q, which is gonna be draw mode. And now I can hold down shift and I can smooth. If I make my shift size really large and give it some intensity, there we go. So right now I was just shift smoothing with Z intensity at zero and it's just adding or taking away. So basically, oh, again, I'm gonna go over this a little bit fast, but I've got my recordings up and running. So we just gotta go through and edit them. Long story short, if we go into our stroke properties, we'll take our stroke menu over here. We have adaptive and combined. These are global. There's gonna be brush specific settings. If you go into your brush menu here, you're gonna have Sculptures Pro. Here's your Sculptures Pro individual brush settings. You can see use globals on by default. So if for any reason you have a brush that you don't wanna use the global settings, you can go into here, turn off use global, and now you have the subdivide, undivide ratios, adaptive size and combined available to you per brush. Um, for example, if I go into my H polish brush, I think it was H polish, I'm trying to remember, you know, I think I just did a test, but what you could do is if you use H polish and you never want to use um, Sculptures Pro, what you can do is just click enable off and Sculptures Pro will still be available to you for your other brushes. You can see when I go to standard brush, it's there, but if I go back to H polish, it's disabled. Um, if you want to save that, you can go fa uh, brush, save as, go to your um, ZBrush 2018, Z Data, brush presets, and you can see in here there's your H Polish brush. Um, if you save over these brushes, every time you load up ZBrush, your H Polish brush will always have your Sculptures Pro disabled, or you can turn off Use Global and set their own settings in here for these brushes. Or if you want to have this H Polish brush, using global. You can also go to here to your brush. You can say clone it off. And now you have H polish one. Um, and now you can change the settings to whatever you want, Sculptures Pro or other. And, and you know, a lot of these settings for how H polish interacts with the meshes underneath the samples here and brush modifier sometimes. Change these up, save this one out. Uh, if, you, if you're not gonna use it that often and you wanna just go and grab it from say, the light box menu, you can save it in here. So that would be brush, save as, Z program files, pixel logic, ZBrush 2018, Z brushes. And you're gonna see in here, I've got a bunch of folders that um, you know you can make your own, you can make a new folder and call it like H polish pav, and then drop your H polish brush in there. If you are gonna use it a lot uh, and you don't wanna overwrite your original H polish, you can go into Z brush, Z startup, brush presets, you can drop it in here. You can see I have a move accu in here. So that's the same thing. So if I go to my move brush, you're gonna see I can use my move brush here and I can, let me just kill this real quick. So on this mesh right here, if I use the move brush, you're gonna see it kind of does a nice soft move, which everybody likes. Um, underneath this curve here, you can turn on accu curve and you can pull out the points. So this is useful sometimes for hard surface if you wanna just like pull out to a rectangular point instead of pulling out to a soft curve, you can use this accu curve, but I still wanna use my move brush. So instead of having this menu always open or having accu curve turned on in this because I only use it for my move brush, what I did was I have a move brush and then I cloned it off and I made a move accu brush with accu curve turned on. I saved it into ZBrush uh, 2018, Z Startup, Brush Presets. You can see I have Move Accu in here. So every time I start up ZBrush, I now have a Move Accu brush that I can assign a hotkey to. It's Alt V. So Alt W is my Move Brush, Alt V is Move Accu. And now I can use Alt V to kind of pull out to corners instead of. Um, you know, using move and that pulls out to these nice soft shapes like so. Cool. Um, Osifald says, what brushes are useless in the new ZBrush because of new brushes with better algorithms? Um, I can't think of any useless brushes off the top of my head. I mean, I'll, there's a lot of scenarios where some brushes with new, like Sculptures Pro, they're set up to work really nicely with Sculptures Pro maybe. Um, but if you're ever not using Sculptures Pro, you can use the older brushes with the older algorithms and, um, and use those, I think. 
So off the top of my head, I'm not sure if there's an answer for that that I have. Um, when would you use hard versus soft edges in production for games? Um, as far as like the game res, I would use, and I go over this in the Houdini one, I would use soft edges. I would average. When you have a low res mesh and you want to put it in engine, um, if you average all of your vertices, those are going to give you, um, it's going to be a little bit more optimized for running quicker in engine, long story short. So average as many vertices as you can. However, a longer UV border, you're going to pay the cost of two uh, locations because you're going to have your UV shell is going to be split along that border. So you're going to have a UV over here and a UV over here that shares the same position as a vertice. So it's going to have two UV positions. So you're already paying that cost. So in that case, what you could do is harden your open UV borders. So I'd basically average all my vertices except for the open UV borders. I'd go ahead and harden those up. Um, and if you're really smart with your UVs, you can, um, you know, like hard surface UVs, you could, along an edge, you can split along your hard edges, give it a little bit of shell room, shell padding in between there. So when you bake your normals, um, you get a little bit of room to get nice bevels baked in. Does that make sense? Probably not. That's something I'd have to demonstrate, but I couldn't do it uh, this morning. I don't think I have enough time. Plus, um, I wouldn't be able to do it in ZBrush. ZBrush, when you export, uh, for example, I use FBX all the time. If I'm not using GoZ, I'll use FBX export. And in here, you can even tell it under options. Um, smooth, smooth, smooth. There's S normals. So you can... Um, you can export your FBX with all smooth or all hard, um, but there's no way to say like harden along my UVs that I know of. Don't quote me on that. Maybe there is, um, but I'll usually just do that in an external program. Or like I said, um, if you watch the Houdini stuff, you'll see, let's change that Z intensity up. You'll see, uh, I just have a node for that. It's under my game dev voxel stuff. Oh, speaking of, so Sculptures Pro, um, it is very useful. Let's, let's do this. So, Sculptors Pro. We can go in here with our standard brush and let's take our standard brush, let's clone it off and let's change this to a drag rect. And we'll say, go to a star alpha and change our focal shift down to negative 100. So we can actually just drag off. Let's change that Z intensity down a bit. So now we can make a star, but you're like, okay, this star is really low res, but over here it's a little higher res because I have more tessellation in the geometry. So one thing, that um, as of this recording, this Sculptress, uh, Sculptress Pro mode um, isn't gonna be working with masking or incidentally also isn't gonna work nice with any brush settings that have auto masking turned on. So for example, if I say mask by poly groups up to 100 and I just go back to my regular standard brush, um, it's not gonna automatically tessellate. So if I turn mask by poly groups down to zero, now it'll dynamically tessellate. So, and I'll same thing with back face masking. Um, so just that's something to keep in mind. However, there is a way where you can have your cake and eat it too. So for example, we have a drag rect, we have a star, we wanna drag rect the star out. Again, remember, if you just need more resolution in here, hold down shift, change your Z intensity down to zero or save out a brush. And then depending on your brush size, because we have, sorry, I'm all over the place. Because we have a combined, we have adaptive size turned on, which is going to basically tell ZBrush, dependent on my brush size, if I make my brush size really small, it'll make really, really dense polygons. If I make my brush size really big, it'll make really, really large polygons. And because um, adaptive size is turned on, we're able to do that with our brush size, as well as we're able to not only tessellate, which is what we're doing here, we're tessellating this geometry on the fly, we're able to tessimate or decimate the geometry and remove geometry as needed. So how we do that is having this combine button turned on. So with combine turned on, it will tessellate and decimate. So if I take this brush over this dense area, it's gonna remove geometry. If I take it over here, and then as I go over areas with um, less geometry, it's gonna tessellate. So it's tessellating and decimating at the same time. If you only want it to tessellate, you can turn combine off. And now if I go through here, it's only going to, in higher areas, um, let's see, let me go back to my standard brush here. 
we're, we'll, we're able to add geometry as I make it lower, but then as I go bigger, you're going to see it's not going to tessellate. It's just going to deform the underlying surface. That's because we told it don't tessimate or don't decimate, don't get rid of any geometry, uh, only add geometry. So there's some instances, and again, I got videos coming out that's going to explain instances where you may or may not want that and performance issues with that or performance capabilities with that. But um, anyway, back to what I was talking about. So what we can do is we can add geometry where we need it. You just make your brush size small and just go through here. And then we'll go back to our new brush that we made that had the drag rect in here. And now you can just pull that through. So you can pre-tessellate the area and then use your drag rect brush through there. Um, same thing with our vector displacement brushes. So if I go to brush, insert, um, not brush insert, BC, brush chisel, we'll go say chisel creature. And let's also hold down shift, let's change the intensity up to 100. Um, let's say you want to swap these ears out. So another cool thing is if I didn't have Sculptures Pro and I wanted to sm swap these ears out, I'd have to like go through here and I'd have to be like, okay, hold on. Let me grab my select lasso and let me get right in here, invert that, delete hidden close holes, mirror and weld, and then smooth this down and then move that geometry around. Um, instead of doing all that, what we can do, hold down shift, make sure Sculptors Pro is on, and then you can just smooth these completely down to nothing. Because it, remember, we have combined turned on, so we're testimating as we go. And I'm trying to stay away from this. If I hit W and control tap this polygroup, we can now make a big brush and we're fine. So now we can just smooth those down to nubbins. Uh, speaking of, we were doing the snake hook sphere thing. Um, for example, this might be an instance where you would use this. I think Pablo Munoz did this. Don't quote me on that if I'm wrong. I apologize. Um, you can go through here, and if you want to do like a water droplet, you can use like snake hook, like so. And here's another thing too I forgot to mention. With snake hook here, it's looking at the surface normal, so I'm just able to pull off the surface normal. If you go to um, brush modifier, so brush menu, modifiers here, you're gonna see the brush modifier set to zero, so it's pulling out of the surface normal. If you change that brush modifier to 100, if you start sculpting on your mesh here, you're gonna see it's pointing straight towards your camera, like so. So as I pull this out and around, you're gonna see it's coming right at me. If I turn this down to zero, you're gonna see it's just pulling off the surface normal. That is the exact same thing if I do snake hook two, you're gonna see that brush modifier changes to 100. That's basically what it's changing. Snake hook sphere, Brush my fire set to 100, so as I pull this thing out, let's see it's coming right at me, oh my god. However, if I change this back down to the brush modifier of 0 or 1 or 50, if you want to kind of do half and half, you can just use this to kind of pull out. Uh, but we'll stick with snake hook, we'll change our brush modifier to like 37. And now we can start like pulling out along the surface normal, but also taking into consideration some of the camera. We can kind of maybe do like water droplets like so. And also, if you hold down shift and start smoothing and let go of shift, you can inflate now. So if those ends are getting a little bit um, thin, you can go ahead and smooth them out a little bit. And as well as what we were talking about earlier, if you want to go ahead and separate these things out in the water droplets, so you can just go bloop. And then we'll smooth some of these down, give it a little bit more of a watery look. And then we'll go ahead and bloop, bloop, blop, like so. And go ahead and thin these things out. So, whoosh, little raindrops, something like that. And if you want to get rid of those completely, just smooth it down. So anyway, we smoothed the ear down, and then we wanted to go into BC brush chisel creature, and in here we've got some ears. So if you want to swap this out with like little ears, again vector displacement isn't going to work nicely with Sculptures Pro. You're going to see it's grayed out. However, just like we did with our alphas, you can pre-tessellate the area just to give you more geometry. And then when you pull through, got our ears here, nice and high res. Um, speaking of vector displacement, this might be a fun one for you guys. I don't know. We'll give it a shot. So if we go, you know what? Let's hit comma key. Let's go to our projects. And we'll go to miscellaneous. So like we've gone over before, if you go to my playlist, you go to ZBrush 4R8, what's new? We talk all about vector displacement. In fact, 
There's even a Houdini and GoZ and vector displacement, so you can use Houdini to use arbitrary meshes to create your vector displacement, like heads and hands and stuff. Um, so you can go there and whoops, check that out. However, what I'm getting at here is we'll do this brush 3D template. And this allows us to um, create vector displacements. Now the catch to vector displacement is you can't, um, so you can use alphas on here, but you can't, and we're using, um, it shows a creature, but it looks like I lost our, there we go. So you can use alphas on here, but you can't like do an insert mesh brush and you can't like use Sculptures Pro because it's gonna change this geometry. And we always have to be able to get back to sub subdivision level uh, one, which is just one flat square plane. So you can't break this. You can't add geometry, you can't freeze subdivisions, you can't do anything. However, let's go ahead and say delete higher. So we're gonna go subdivision level seven, which you can kind of use if you're careful, is we'll hit W and we'll go into our gear here and we'll say project primitive. Uh, oops, we have to delete lower so we don't have any subdivision history. Go to project primitive. And now what we can do is let's go ahead and do a, just in case, full reset here. And let's say we want to, it's right, right down the middle so it's kind of acting oddly, but we can pull this back. And let's also just play it extra safe. We're gonna take this test, oh boy, you can barely read that that tessellate here. Let's go ahead and move that down to 100. So this will give us the lowest amount of tessellation possible. So if we start pulling out, eventually we could have it tessellating those edges, but if you're just using project, and let's turn this blend down here, you can actually just project through this plane and then we can reconstruct our subdivision history later. So if you wanna say like make a shape like this and then say accept, and then move this over here and then make this spherical and then make it smaller. And you can do radial symmetry, you can do X and Y and Z symmetry. Um, you can change this shape to go to like maybe a cube. And again, we're not changing this geometry at all. All we're doing is projecting meshes through this. So we can say, okay, we like that one. And then for this one here, let's say we wanna make it a little bit of a harsher square. And we'll go ahead and scale this one up and we'll accept it. And then let's say we pull this in till it punches through and we'll scale this down and we'll soften this these edges a little bit here and maybe we'll turn on a little bit of blend like so. So again, we're not changing the geometry, we're not tessellating geometry, we're just projecting those through the plane. So if we're happy with this, we can say accept. And now all I gotta do is hit reconstruct and we reconstruct all the way back down to where we have just that one plane. And now if we want to say add this vector displacement to this stack right here, we can go over here to brush, create. Uh, oh, I'm sorry, uh, from mesh. And now we have, you can see we got the little 3D vector displacement. We now have this vector displacement available to us. So if we go to a sphere, Make poly mesh 3D, subdivide this thing up. And now, again, we can use horns if we want to, but we can also use this vector displacement. You can call it an alt and use it. So you can use vector displacement in conjunction with um, the vector displacement. What am I trying to get at? The plane. You can use it with that as long as you don't change that geometry and you just use it to project shapes. Um, and this is, th these, these are really cool too because not only can you make cool shapes, you can also do undercuts. So you can put like even a little smiley face on the back here if you wanted to on your vector displacement plane. Again, go to Zebras 48, what's new, and you can learn all about that. But you can also change this to like a dot stroke and you can drag these out. Let's go ahead and turn off Lazy Mouse here. Um, and if you have Lazy Mouse turned on, let's go to Lazy Mouse here. Let's change that lazy radius down. The lazy step, we can increase or decrease that. Hold on. There you go, so we can kind of space these out or let's just drag this over. Um, lazy step, we can put them a little closer than one or we can really stack them up by changing that like so. It also has Z intensity, so we can hold down lightly and then hard and then light again. And one thing we usually do is go down here to alpha and texture and you're gonna see we have a low and high magnify. So we can like say our high to three. And now when we go, so let's say, 
let's do compare and contrast. So low to high to low. And then if we change that magnify and we go brush pressure sensitivity low to major brush pressure sensitivity to low. And we can also um, make our brush size bigger if we want. You can see what it's doing. It's giving you a little bit of a difference, kind of inflating as you push down, give you a little bit of a different look. So anyway, new stuff. Oh, now my back's starting to go. I'm an old, old man. Um, let's see, where did I leave off? Any buzz? Oh, well, let's, let's check back down here. Cool. Okay. Um, Methods to maintain sharp edges while still dividing a mesh. I would say probably creasing is your best bet. For example, let's see, subtool. That just gives me a little bit more control. You can add control loops here. Let's go ahead and delete this. So, start the poly mesh. Oops. Poly mesh 3D. And then we're going to go down here to initialize. I always like to start with a Q cube here. Um, so uh, we want to say take this side out and maybe let's go ahead across X symmetry here and we'll go ahead and paint these. I just love using polygroups on here. There's a bunch of polygroup options you can do on the fly to make these shapes here. Now if you want to maintain hard edges like this, if you go to your geometry crease menu, you can set your crease tolerance. So anything over that number and you can raise and drop this as needed. For example, I pull this out and then we say mark, mark these and we'll go ahead and delete those polys and then we'll go ahead and bridge two holes. We'll go here to here. We want to bridge this up. So now we have, um, if we go through here and we crease, you're going to see it's going to automatically crease those edges because our crease tolerance is set to 86. If we drop this way down to like eight and well, a little higher. Oh, there we go. So right along here. So let's do uncrease all. And if we drop our, if crease tolerance by default, I think it's set to like 40 or something, that'll usually be pretty good angle to like, if I hit D for a dynamic preview, you're going to see it'll give us nice smooth curves along there. However, as I drop that crease tolerance, it's going to start creasing more and more things until eventually it actually grabs these really shallow angles here. So, or you can just do crease all if you want to just crease, there we go, crease all. Um, so creasing in conjunction with, let's change that back to 40, uncrease all, crease. Or you can use crease PG for crease polygroups. You have your polygroups set up, so we can just do a group by normals under your polygroup menu. And then we can do uncrease all, then we can do crease PG. And then again, like we talked about earlier, you can set your crease level to three, smooth subdued to four, and that'll start beveling these edges. If you go even lower, like say crease level of one, you're gonna get a really soft fall off. Um, however, you can always go back in and insert a single edge loop and just tighten up where you need to. Let's say you want a really big fall off on this bottom here. You can go through here and then you can tighten up this top part and have those. Or if you want it really, really uncreased, you can go through here and say crease edge. Uh, let's do crease edge loop partial and then hold down alt and uncrease this. So now this is very soft and this is a little bit tighter. So a lot of different ways you can kind of control that creasing. Um, another thing I like about the ability to use uh, QMesh here is this type of ability where I can just pull through and let's do polygroup ball. You can just pull through these um, objects here and delete them. And then we can go ahead and mark these and pull these back out. You see, I put in those control loops. Let's go ahead and get rid of those. Insert a single edge loop, hold down Alt. So now, um, oops. Oh, we have this. Let's go ahead and do a collapse edge. We can just go ahead and collapse these edges down like so. Let's see if we do collapse poly loop. That's eh, gonna do something weird. Collapse edge, and we'll go ahead and just get rid of these edges here. There we go. So um, let's do a quick mirror, mirror and weld. Oops. And we'll hit make sure X is turned on. And then as we're Q meshing out, again, you're able to Q mesh and then just pull through, or you can do a single poly, or you can Q mesh out and then we can maybe do like inset a single poly here, and then we can Q mesh a single poly in. And then if you want something to go right in there, you can just hold down control and pop out a copy. And now you've got two separate meshes in here. So this mesh will fit right in there. And then again, if we just run a crease, hit D, and now let's do our crease level of like 
3, smooth slope of 4. And we can get that kind of result. Um, also, if you're just doing hard surface shapes, what I might suggest doing, let's go over here. So crease, dynamic subdiv. You're going to see we have dynamic subdivision, subdivision with smooth subdivisions. Let's go ahead and turn that down to 0. And let's use QGrid instead. What QGrid is going to do, if I turn off polyframe, and we change this coverage, you're going to see it's going to go ahead and bevel every single one of my edges. And you can also say bevel or chamfer. If you change this to um, just chamfer, it'll start rounding out those edges here. So you can change your coverage if you want really soft round corners. And then uh, Q grid up or down. And then you can also turn on smooth subdivision as well if you want to kind of soften those out. Um, or you can do chamfer and bevel or just bevel or just chamfer. Um, and then change your coverage to dial in and out how harsh you want those angles. So, and again, it's just a preview. If I hit Shift D, it turns dynamic off, and we're back where we started. But the cool one about this one is we can go through here and we can say, you know what, I'm going to Q mesh a poly, and you're going to see how it kind of snaps to those increments. Let's say we want to snap to like quarter step. So we can go one, two, three, four. So let's say we can do that, and then we'll Q mesh these polys out. And then we'll Q mesh these polys in, and then we'll Q mesh these polys out, and we'll like snap again. Well, let's do Q mesh these polys out, and then we'll do another snap to incremental. So you can start making those shapes, and as we're doing that, it's constantly keeping us beveled, previewed, and we're getting nice results. So now we can go in here and insert single edge loop here, or we can insert a single edge loop, then we can like bevel this edge loop here, and then we can say Q mesh. All of these polygons, you can Q mesh one, and then you can Q mesh and kind of do like a little taper here. And then we can just tap this one to maintain those settings from our, our other one here. Um, or, and or, you can do Q mesh polygroup all, and all of those polygroups are going to be um, through here. Now you're going to notice as I do this one, it's going to want to stick. That's a, another feature of Q mesh. In that case, it's actually kind of cool. But if you don't want that, just switch it over to an extrude, simple extrude polygroup all. And now, You'll just get that, and it won't it won't be sticky. But that is one of the cool things about Q mesh is the ability to have things stick together. So if we do Q mesh a single poly, you can pull this up, and if we hold down Shift to smooth those things. Oops, sculptor's problem mode off. Um, you're going to see those are stuck together. However, um, let's say we let's do Q mesh poly, and then Q mesh this poly, and you're going to see those automatically stick together. And same thing, I can get rid of them. It just snaps away. You can just delete these things um, as needed. Just pull from this side here. Super duper easy, right? Uh, however, if we do, and if you want to pull out the exact same width, you can just tap. Uh, you should be able to just tap. Let's do a line full. There we go. You can just tap. However, same thing with extruding Q mesh, or you can extrude a single poly and you can extrude and then tap. And then any one of these you tap, it's going to go to the same distance. However, because we didn't extrude and not a Q mesh, these ones, oh, is it going to make a liar of me? Let's try that again. Extrude a single poly here. Maybe if you drag it and try to eyeball it, it keeps them separate. But if you tap, it does sew them up. Good to know. So different functionality. Um, we can go through here and extrude these things up, and those things will sew together. But if you do extrude a poly separately, it's not going to stick them together. But if you do Q mesh a single poly, that's where it automatically sticks. Like so. Um, however, this isn't going to work really well, like we mentioned before, if we were to do like delete single poly here and then bridge. Uh, two holes, so here to here. And now we're using dynamic with Q grid on. The Q grid's looking at every single one of these. In fact, if we go ahead and hit apply, you can see this is the geometry it's giving us, um, which is perfectly fine on this geometry down here. However, on this rounded corner, it's not great. So what we might have to do is do Q grid down to zero and then change this back up to like smooth, dub, smooth subdiv of three, crease level of two. Let's do crease level three, smooth level of four, and then go through here. I'm just going to do a quick crease, or you know, do crease with a crease tolerance. And now it'll crease your hard edges here, and then on these rounded surfaces here, you can crease or not crease. You can say crease edge, hold down Alt, you can do that. Or if you want, you can crease up. Let's say you want to crease this one and this one, and then we'll Q mesh single poly out, and then we'll just run another. That's like a little Shrek. 
and then uh, we just run a crease. Anyway, we're getting towards the end. How to straighten up long spikes. I'm not sure I follow on that one. Uh, minimum processor for ZBrush. Uh, there should be minimum specs on the product page. Um, I'm not real positive on that, but I think they do have a minimum spec. Cool. All right. I think I'm all caught up. Thanks, everybody, for showing up. I'm going to go ahead and head out. Um, but like I said, we're real close to ZBrush 2018. What's new? I've got all this stuff recorded. And then I've got a little bit more stuff to record, and then I'll go ahead and start editing, and I'm going to drop those periodically throughout the week. So keep an eyeball on my YouTube channel, and eventually I'll throw them up for free on Gumroad on Cube Brush. You can just download them, and we can go from there. So, long story short, thanks everybody, and for the Facebook people, I'll see you all later. Um, this Thursday I should be on my channel. What I'm going to switch to on my channel is the first and last Thursday of the month. And I'm just to keep me more regular because I have to kind of skip around a little bit. And the same thing on the Pixelogic channel. I think I'm out for the rest of the next Tuesdays of the month because I just got a crazy schedule. But moving forward, I'd like to do the first and last Tuesday of the month as well with Pixelogic. So I can just, just be a little bit more regular. But, all right. See you guys this Thursday on my channel and then next month on Pixel.